Moana Mackey. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and like colleagues before me, I too would like to extend my thoughts and my sympathies to those miners in the Pike River mine disaster and their families. Um, I think they can be uh, well informed that the Parliament is very aware of what they are going through and, and our thoughts are with them um, as a collective, which is why I agree with my colleague Trevor Mallard. I think it perhaps was a tad inappropriate that these two, this piece of legislation and the one that follows were progressed today. Um, I think it perhaps would have been more, more sensitive and more appropriate to have done these pieces of legislation which have relevance for those miners but which are also very political, very divisive, uh, to be done at a later date. But nonetheless, here we are. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, Labor, of course, is opposing this piece of legislation. It is, it is unfair, it is unjustified. Uh, it is not needed and it will not have the outcomes that the government claims it will have. In fact, we believe it will have exactly the opposite in terms of its, its effect. Uh, I want to first point out that this, this piece of legislation represents yet another broken promise from this National League government. Uh, when we went through the election campaign, Mr Speaker, National MPs and National candidates were at pains to point out that bringing in a 90-day fire at will period uh, would only apply to small businesses, those with 20 or less staff. They said New Zealanders did not need to worry because those were the only people that were going to be affected. It was not going to be extended any further. And I myself sat in, in candidate meetings where, where national members and national candidates were at pains to point out that this would not apply to those in, in much bigger um, companies. Well, here we stand today, Mr Speaker, about to uh, pass a blessed piece of legislation which represents another broken promise from this national government because this bill does extend the 90-day fire at will period to all businesses and all employees in New Zealand. Uh, listening to the members opposite, you, they, they try and, and, and insinuate that trial periods didn't exist before they came into government. Um, Mr Speaker, this is absolutely not true. Under the legislation that the Labor government passed, trial periods were, of course, uh, allowed. Um, as, as you would expect. Uh, this is not actually about trial periods themselves, Mr Speaker, at all, as members opposite are trying to claim. What this is about is whether or not an employee has any rights at all during that trial period. Uh, and this is where we part company with the government on this particular issue. Because Labor believes that if someone is going to be fired, if someone is going to have their livelihood taken away from them, then it is only fair that they are told why. And I look forward to the, the final National Party member speaking on this bill telling us why they, think it's why they think that it's fair that someone can be fired and they're not told why they're being fired. And my other question to National would be, how are we going to get more productive workplaces if we have legislation which says that an employee who is being fired because presumably they're doing something the employer doesn't like, but the employer doesn't have to tell them or give them any opportunity to correct their behaviour, or even if they don't want them to correct their behaviour, to tell them what they're doing wrong so that when they apply for their next job, they know what the reason was, that they, why they were fired in the first place. How are workplaces going to be more productive? How are workers going to be more productive? How are they going to be able to upskill and make the changes in their work practices that are needed to make their workplace more productive when they don't have to be told why they're fired? And I think this is a, a fundamental point about fairness and the difference between this side of the House and that side of the House. Because passing legislation which says you can be fired for no reason is not fair. It's not fair. And as I said, Mr Speaker, this isn't about trial periods. This is actually about legalising discrimination. Because that's the only difference. Most employees and employers have very good working relationships and they don't have to revert to employment law in order, in order to carry out that relationship because it works just fine. So we have protections in place for where the relationship disintegrates uh, and where that employment relationship is not working. And what this piece of legislation does is it says that, for example, an employee who's hired, 90-day trial period, um, or, it's, or uh, it's actually a fire at will period, but they go in that first 90 days, say they join a union, or say their employer finds out that they're a member of a union or, or that they're a member of the Labour Party, say their employer finds out, finds out that they're gay and has a problem with that. 
Or say you're a woman, Mr Speaker, who is employed and then within the first 90 days gets pregnant and the employer suddenly sees a whole raft of costs coming ahead or, or per, per, maternity leave. Maternity leave. And, and we've, we've given examples, Mr Woodhouse, and, and this is classic. Mr Woodhouse says, come up with examples, come up with examples. And I want to point something out, because members on the other side of the House are so out of touch with the reality for workers and the imbalance of power that exists in that relationship. It would be, it's like shooting a hole in your CV to come out publicly and say, I'm the person who's going to publicly, you know, come out and say, I was fired under a 90-day trial period. I think it's really unfair and awful. What does Mr Woodhouse think that does to that employee's future prospects? Many workers find it incredibly untenable that they've been fired unfairly during a 90-day trial period. But... They feel that to, to, to come out and do a big hoopla like National says they should have to in order to have any rights um, might say to another employer, don't hire this person. What they want to do is they want to get a job to replace the one that they've been fired from unfairly and they want to be able to move on. And the fact that Mr Woodhouse would even say that and suggest that, that employees who've been fired should have to come out in the media to defend themselves really shows how out of touch his government is with the reality for workers in New Zealand at the moment. And I commend, I commend those workers who have had, uh, who have had the courage to come out, knowing that it would, there would be a backlash against them, knowing that this lot have, have sneered sneered and made little of their experiences. I commend those who have come out and, and told their stories despite the backlash that may occur against them in terms of finding another job. It's not an easy thing to do, Mr Woodhouse, when you're trying to put food on the table in an ever-decreasing market of jobs where a government is doing nothing to ensure that you're able to find another job or to make it any easier. So, as I was saying, Mr Speaker, all this bill does is it legalises discrimination. That's the only change that will come out of it. As I said before, most employees and employers have a good working relationship and won't have to resort to the measures in this bill. But where that relationship doesn't work, uh, it is going to, to put a lot... Of, it puts, in fact, all the onus on the employee and none on the employer. An employee who moves to a new job now carries all the risk where we believe that risk should be shared amongst the employee and the employer in a productive working relationship. I want to touch on the issue of union access to the workplace because this is another area where we're just seeing blind ideology over practicality. Uh, there, there is absolutely no evidence to show that there is a mischief that needs to be remedied here, Mr Speaker. We heard that at Select Committee the government has been told that by officials. The Minister, when questioned in the House, couldn't come up with examples of where there was such an issue with unions accessing their members in the workplace, or more importantly, Mr Speaker, union members accessing, accessing their union, uh, that would suggest that we need to introduce such a draconian measure as we're doing in this piece of legislation. Because as my colleagues before me have pointed out, what the government is actually saying is that where an employee has an issue with their employer, and wants to get some advice about how to solve that. It might be, it might be uh, that they're being asked to sign a different contract, maybe uh, on lower terms and conditions. Um, maybe it's an issue of sexual harassment, as my colleague Trevor Mallard has pointed out. They now have to get permission from the very person who is causing that problem in order to have their union come in and help them remedy that problem. And given that we have no evidence at all of any abuse of this in New Zealand, because unions need to have good relationships with the employers. We're, this is not kind of Soviet-era style politics, and I think the National Party still see the union as the enemy, where, where businesses in New Zealand have moved on, by and large, and see unions as a partner that actually can provide an awful lot of good in their workplace, can help lift productivity, but the National Party still sees them as the enemy, still sees them as a group of individuals out there who criticise them so like with student associations, let's try and get rid of them by reducing their ability to, uh, to, to properly advocate for their members. And again, we ask, why are we introducing a piece of legislation, uh, a, a, a clause in, a, in, in this piece of legislation to fix, something, fix a problem that doesn't exist, which actually could result in those workers in the most, most vulnerable types of situations are not having access to the kind of assistance that they should be able to. Finally, I just want to, to touch on the reinstatement as primary remedy issue, Mr Speaker. This basically says to, to that small number of employers out there who might want to use it, just go ahead and get rid of someone unfairly, because even if 
they, at, at the tribunal or the employment court says it was unfair and it was wrong, they now no longer have to be reinstated in that position. That's a dangerous precedent to be set.